Hey guys, this is Seth Underwood from SU Fly Fishing. Um, today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about my biggest brook trout ever. All right, brook trout where I live usually spawn, and it can be up or down. Spawning season is more of a guess than anything. So, if you think it's over and you go up and there are trout on reds, they're definitely still spawning. And then you have, you know, and then there is, you try not to get in the water to step on red, so you step on eggs, and then you kill them, the next generation of fish, and there's a whole big thing with conservation. So, where I live, um, brook trout, um, their native population of streams are dwindling. Um, they seem to kind of stabilize now, more so than they have, but they're still, in, in, it, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Where I live, there used to be brook trout everywhere now you only got a few streams in the area if that and then you have national parks <laughs> along mountain ranges that have them but you're not going to find anything big this is why this fish that i caught was such an anomaly the particular species of trout that i target in this story are the appalachian variety um, you have northern strain which would get a little more dark the Appalachian strain tend to be a little more colorful. Um, here's a example of both. Here is the Appalachian strain. And here is the Northern strain. Natives, for the people that fish in the Appalachians, are, they're special. A lot of fly fishermen try their hardest. If it's been a rough, dry year, they try not to pressure them at all. I have went this year maybe... And I went this year maybe to fly fish with brook trout maybe uh, 10 times. after, uh, uh, And that's mostly uh, in the spring of last year. Um, and just to get this out there um it does put stress on the fish whenever the fish is really really you know really low and really hot and if you have a year where you don't have a lot of water flow and the water's really low <clears throat> the fish the water's not as oxygenated they're hot they got predators that are coming after them because the lot they're all put together there's a lot of factors and then you have people that are fishing for them and they might eat and you might see them swim off well, it's like a brain aneurysm, and you, you you know, you could literally get hit in the head with a bat and then walk off and die. A lot of times we go, well, swim off fine. We have to be conscious of what our actions do to fish. I might sound a little preachy. It's just, it's, I've seen catch and release done properly, and it has made some of the places I fish remain great. Okay remain great um so so this time going brook trout fishing it is mid-december um because brook trout in appalachia typically spawn from the beginning of beginning it's i think the upper range is beginning of october all the way down to some are still spawning until december uh first second week of December. so i wait till like this the third or fourth week of december to actually try and fish for them the best thing happens with these brook trout whenever a hatch busts out in the middle of winter and the day is warm. They eat everything. And what we had was a midge slash small caddis hatch. Um, and the thing is, is, is with most hatches, you can schedule them. You, can, you know when they have. Very rarely do caddis where I live hatch in the winter but when it happened and there were size 16 18 caddis and there were size 20 22 midges we just put on double dry we put on a size 16 caddis and behind it a size uh, 22 midge and we put some floating on them and just went to town we caught probably me and my buddy Austin who was with me 30 brook trout and we only fished about a mile stretch of river so we, we were having a great time. It was a great time. And we started walking upstream. We get to this really deep hole. 
And now if I say anything else besides that, people are going to know where it is. Okay. Um, and I'm going to try not to spot burn. So we get this really deep pulse, really big. Okay. And we see them rising still. I mean, they're eating, eating, eating. So we start casting. And the biggest brook trout at that point that we had caught was maybe 11 inches, which for my friends that fly fish for those Appalachian brook trout, you know, that's a big brook trout. Well, the next thing, my friend with the same little setup that we had, Caddis and Midge, pulls on a Midge, a 12 inch brook trout. And that's the biggest brook trout I've seen at this point. Then I hook into one, 12 inches. He hooks into one, 10 inches. And we're realizing all the fish that had spawned in here, all the big females were starving. And, and believe me, I checked. There were All the reds were empty. There were no fish. Um, and I, I had gone there a week before just to check because me and him were talking about going brook trout fishing. This stretch of river, I walked all the way up it and didn't look at it. It was just a two or three mile hike, just the water we were fishing. And I was just looking at it and I was like, we're good to go. All the brook trout were off the reds. There were reds with no fish on them. And I was like, we're going to go fishing. Um, so... At this point, we're thinking, man, they're just eating. Like, just got done with spawning. They're, they're, it's one of those, like, perfect storm situations. There's plenty of food. Like, it, literally, it was, like, just midges and caddis. Like, every, like, two or three centimeter, there was another fly. Like, it, there were everywhere. And um, I decide, well, I need to differentiate because we were having some where they would come up and eat. But we took them on that side of the mouth because they weren't eating our fly. They were eating the fly right next to so I put on a size 14 elk hair caddis, white on top, and we had brown and black on the bottom. So I'm casting it out, and we start seeing all these fish like swim, hit, hit, and hit, and hit. And we've seen a couple hits that looked bigger than what we were expecting. We um, we we, were, we decided to stop fishing because we again at this point we had caught about 30 fish, and we we're getting ready to go. And we've seen this fish rise, rise, rise. So we're sitting there, and I'm going, man, you know that's a big fish and we saw it rise again and we saw um a big head and i thought man that's a that that's not a brook trout that has to be some kind somehow a stalker fish got in here i don't know somehow so we sit there and we watch and then you know all of a sudden like everything just shut up there was plenty of flies on there just fish stopped biting we all know that feeling when they just stop so i think well fish are stopped biting we we waited too long you know they're done or we've spooked fish or, or something so i sat down on this rock and my buddy austin is putting up his fly fish up and he's had walked up to this like little patio area before we were going to go back up the trail so he's sitting at this area and um it wasn't even patio it was like a little like place to stop with the bench on the stairs so i start throwing um this big caddis just because hey maybe it will and as it was coming down, I could look down and see this massive brook trout swim up from about, starting from about maybe 20 to 15, it, it was it was about 15 feet. No, I don't want to over-exaggerate. Maybe about 12 to 10 feet. It was deep. And I saw it swimming. And I, all I'm doing is like little, like, little, like, corrections, like little mins. I'm trying not to move it as much as I can. And it comes up. All the way up. Soon as he came up and ate and turned, I hooked into him. I have a three weight with seven X on. Okay. This fish doubled my rod over and just took me all over this deep hole. And all I could do was sit there with this little seven and a half foot three weight and just every now and then pull out line up drag. I fought this fish for about five minutes and all I remember saying is I almost got him in. And my buddy Austin finally got a good look at the fish. When he saw him, he jumped five foot off an embankment onto a rock with the net in his hand. Literally sit there one foot on a rock and the other foot on a rock in the water. And this water is not warm. He's freezing. He's in shorts at this point. And he just, he goes and he scoops it up, brings it out, looks at me. And I look at him. He puts it back in like this little like hole of water that was sitting there to keep the fish wet. And we just looked at each other and was like, oh my gosh, freaking out. And in this picture that I'm going to show you, this brook trout was just a shy smaller than 16 inches. 
This is by far the biggest Appalachian brook trout I've ever caught. This was not a stalker. This was completely wild. This river does not get stalked. This river has not been stocked, uh, has not been touched by a stock truck. This is a native brook trout. And I have not seen a, fit, a brook trout that big. And I have been fishing since that day another 10, 11 years. And I just, I can't. My, I can't fathom how just just it was a great day so well guys if you enjoyed this uh, story um, please leave a comment and tell me what you liked about it what you hated about it tell me if you didn't like it at all huh? you know freedom say what you want um, if you like the movie please leave a like and if you would like to see more please uh, subscribe and as always guys tight lines and blessings <laughs>